Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a little niche fragrance haul and at least one of these fragrances I discovered thanks to your incredible recommendations. So I blame you. I definitely blame you guys for my continued fragrance addiction, but there's just something that's really special about discovering new fragrances that blow your mind. And that was the case with all of these. So I recently purchased three new fragrances to add to my collection and I saved them all so we could unbox here together. And I'm going to begin by sharing the fragrance that I picked up during my last shopping vlog in Orlando. This might be hard for some of you to believe, but it was the very first time I found myself at a Penhaligon's counter. I had heard so much about this brand just from comments, people on YouTube, and of course watching other fragrance videos, and I was always so curious, I had no idea how to pronounce the name. Later, I found out that there is a Penhaligon's counter at the Bloomingdale's in Aventura, so I've since visited again to smell other fragrances. This was my very first experience. I didn't really know what I was looking for. I wasn't necessarily even looking to purchase. I just wanted to smell around since I had heard of the brand. So I'm incredibly grateful that the sales associate who was helping me was very patient and she showed me all of the best selling fragrances, all of the fragrances that she thought I might be interested in. And there were several that were beautiful. I was between I think three or four at the end, but there was one in particular that I just kept going back to, kept going back to, and it was so different and so beautiful. And that one is Changing Constance. I fell in love with this fragrance. In fact, it was so sad when I finally figured out which fragrance I wanted to purchase and I told the sales associate, she came back and of course it was sold out. So I took it as a sign that it just wasn't meant to be and I left the counter, I went shopping elsewhere, but I kept smelling my arm, kept smelling my arm. I kept returning to the blotter card and at that point I was hooked. I just knew that I had to have this fragrance. So I went back to the counter and I had her place in order for me. And this arrived a couple weeks ago now, but I just wanted to wait. And she was really nice. She sent me home with the deluxe sample size, but I haven't touched it so we could rediscover the fragrance together. The brand is based in London and you can read all about their long history and their heritage on their website, but I love how all of the boxes have this really intricate illustration. Changing Constance is part of their portraits collection, so the bottle is a little bit different. It has a slightly heavier glass base than the classic bottles, and each one is topped with a hand-polished animal head inspired by the character they represent. So I think this must be some sort of antelope deer character. It's really beautiful, whatever it is. It doesn't specify on the box or the website, but I did a Google deep dive and I came up with an alpine ibex. It's a mountain goat. I'm pretty sure that is the animal here. Now let's talk about the fragrance itself. I pulled up some information. So this bottle retails for $2.78 and it looks like Penhaligon's is available at Bloomingdale's as well as Saks Fifth Avenue and of course the Penhaligon's website. So Changing Constance falls into the Oriental fragrance family. It says, Constance is what one might call a very modern woman. She has no regard for custom and does exactly as she likes. Cool cardamom, hot pimento, salted caramel. Her contrary perfume breaks every rule. So that tells you right there, this fragrance is meant to stand out and be very different. It's unexpected. The bottle does feel very heavy since it's weighted glass. It feels a lot heavier than other fragrances. And I like that they give characters and stories to all of these portrait fragrances. So let's go ahead and spray. The mister is so fine. I love that. Mm. This fragrance is incredible. I could see this being unisex. I understand why they described it as a blur between masculine and feminine, but I do think it is very feminine because it's a little bit sweet. Slightly sweet, spicy, oriental fragrance. That is the best way to describe it, but there's this cool, almost menthol touch. And I can't tell if it's jasmine or if it's the pimento or what it is about this that gives it this breathy coolness. You know, it's funny now that I'm smelling it again for the first time in a while, it reminds me a little bit of Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin. Just a little bit. They are so different. 
Luby Rouge has that smokiness. It's a little bit leathery. It's very sexy, date night, bold. Whereas this fragrance is more warm, cozy, a little bit sweet, gourmand. It's very romantic. This is definitely more of a winter fragrance. Luby Rouge is as well, but I don't know. I think Luby Rouge is really bold and intense and there's a softness to this fragrance. Oh, it's so nice. As it continues to dry down, I'm starting to pick up on this really pretty soft powdery note. It's really nice, very feminine. Even though there's vanilla and caramel, it's not like really sweet gourmand fragrances. In fact, I think it's a lot closer to Amber Nuit from Christian Dior. The two fragrances smell very different, but they are so similar in a lot of different ways. I would wear them for the same occasion. Like I could see myself wearing Changing Constants on a daily basis. This could be my go-to fall winter fragrance but it's not too much. It would never be too heavy. You know, it's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, but it's so balanced and it's not overly intense that you could wear this daytime. I do think because it is so unique, you could wear this for special occasions and date nights. But Amber Nuit is like that. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, but it's just perfect. It is such a beautiful fragrance that I could not live without it. I had to order this fragrance. I just needed it in my collection and that was it. I really have to be wowed at this point in order to purchase another fragrance because my collection is so big and extensive and I have so many go-to favorites. This was perfection. As soon as I smelled it, my in initial reaction was wow, that's incredible. And as it dried down, it just kept getting better and better. And as I was rotating between all of the blotter cards, it just became abundantly clear that this was so much better than the other fragrances and I had to have it. I'm so happy I added this to my collection. My second fragrance purchase was also made at Bloomingdale's. They have such a great loyalist program, in fact, between these two, I think I earned a $50 gift card to use back at the store. So this fragrance purchase was made in result of picking up that best-selling Discovery set from Montal. So many incredible fragrances. I think I am in love with every single sample that was in that little set. So if you're not familiar with this brand, I would recommend picking up one of the Discovery sets. I think it was maybe $25 and it was the best money ever spent because I had so much fun discovering all of the fragrances. They have a couple different versions. I picked up the best sellers and I ended up purchasing Rose's Musk. This might be their number one seller. I know it's definitely one of the top fragrances from the brand and it wasn't the fragrance that I was leaning to originally. I wanted to pick up maybe Sensual Instinct or Arabian's Tonka. I'm still planning to purchase those as well, but I wanted to start with the basics. Since this was my very first Montal fragrance purchase, I wanted to go with that number one. And a friend of mine actually wears this fragrance and I always compliment her on her perfume because she smells incredible. And it's this one. I love the way this smells on me, but I also love smelling it on other people. So I feel like maybe that's how other people will feel if they smell it on me. It's very strange, I know. But this is the Rose's Musk bottle. Go ahead and unbox. This fragrance retails for $170. It's in Eau de Parfum concentration. Keynotes include rose, jasmine, ambergris, and musk. It's described as a soft, clean blend of roses and musk. This fragrance is made up of pure roses that are delicately harmonized with musk and slightly underlined by a hint of amber and jasmine. And I love the bottle. This tin is so interesting. The entire line is really unique, but of course I'm drawn to this color. It's very pretty. To spray the fragrance, you have to remove the pin. <sighs> mm. <sighs> Amazing. I think this might be my favorite rose fragrance. It's just intoxicating. If you love rose, chances are very high you are going to love Rose's Musk. It doesn't have a really heavy musk. And I do get maybe a little amber, a little jasmine, but it's mainly just rose, but it is very modern and it's very sexy. The dry down of this fragrance is incredible. 
It's just so nice. At first, I wasn't really that drawn to this fragrance when I went through the Discovery set. I kind of thought, okay, you know, I'm familiar with this fragrance, so I don't want to get this one. I wanted to discover the others, but I kept going back to Rose's Musk because it's very classic. It's very clean, beautiful. It smells so elegant. This has got to be the most sophisticated rose fragrance. I think maybe in existence, definitely, that I have smelled. Of all of the fro rose fragrances that I wear and love, it's very hard to compete with this one. And it also has great longevity. It's not going to be really bold and powerful for a, an extremely long time, but hours later, you can absolutely still smell this fragrance. Mm. I would wear this every single day and I think this could be an incredible signature scent because it's very special. It's rose, which might sound sort of boring, like, oh, rose, floral fragrance, but no. You have to wear it on your skin because I don't think if you just spray it on a blotter card, it really does the fragrance justice. But if you wear the fragrance, there's just something about it. It is special. Everywhere you go, somebody will compliment your perfume or they'll tell you you smell really nice or they'll ask you what you're wearing. I do that to people all the time whenever they're wearing this fragrance. I'm going to be wearing this fragrance a lot come spring, summer. And I'm very happy with my decision to purchase Rose's Musk first because I was torn in several different directions from that discovery set. I wasn't sure which I should purchase because they are on the expensive side. This is the least expensive fragrance of today's haul, but it's still $200 for a fragrance. You have to make sure you're not gonna change your mind and wish you had purchased something else later on. For a first purchase from Montal, I think this was the best decision for me personally and my collection. The third and final fragrance I purchased, I sought out after reading a ton of your recommendations. So a huge thank you to you guys. Keep them coming. I love reading your favorites. This is a Bond number no. nine fragrance. I'm sure you can tell which one by the box. It's Greenwich Village. I purchased this from Saks. The key is to put it in your shopping cart and then click out of the tab because a couple days later they sent me a coupon for 15% off and it ended up knocking off 50 to $60 off of the total price. Bond fragrances are ridiculously expensive. So I knew I wanted to get a discount somewhere. I was trying to figure out where I could finagle the best deal. As soon as I saw the Saks 15% off, that was the best way to go. Even better than Bloomingdale's Loyalist, unfortunately they no longer carry Bond fragrances at Nordstrom. They used to. Years ago when I worked at Nordstrom in Nashville, we carried the entire line, which was great. Um, you could probably find these at Neiman Marcus and of course a Bond boutique if you live near one. Luckily we have one in the Aventure Mall, so that's where I discovered the fragrance. I walked in with your list of recommendations. There was one that you recommended to me that they didn't even have. Apparently it's completely sold out. But I tried Greenwich Village. There was another fragrance the sales associate showed me that was really beautiful. I was kind of torn between the two. I tried a couple fragrances that day, not just from Bond. I tried a couple of the Louboutin fragrances. So I was able to wear it on my wrist, walk around. And by the time I drove home, I knew that I was going to purchase this fragrance. It was just love. I became addicted to this scent. This just arrived yesterday, so this is what the box looks like. It's this vibrant emerald green with kind of a crocodile print. Inside the box, you get this little postcard that you could send out just to sign up for their fragrance club. I guess they send you samples of new fragrances and it's just a way for them to gather your information. But the box is really substantial and then the bottle is incredible. I was a little bit disappointed because the Bond logo is scratched. I'm assuming it's brand new. I mean, it didn't come wrapped in cellophane. I don't think they're supposed to, but it did have a plastic cover on the box that you just slide right on and off. So it doesn't tell me a lot. And really it's not a huge deal. It's just that when you spend so much money on fragrance and it's a luxury brand, which Bond is definitely luxury, you want it to be perfect. And I hate that my bottle is scratched a little bit. The bottle feels completely full. Sounds completely full. I don't think it's used or anything like that. It's possible it got scratched in production somehow. The fragrance is so nice, I don't even care. <laughs> it's that good. 
It says 100 milliliters, 3.3 fluid ounces, and this bottle retails for $405. So it is incredibly expensive. You can see why I wanted to wait to get the discount. That extra $50 off certainly helped, and free shipping if you order from Saks. It has keynotes of cassis, lychee, mandarin, peony, water lily, patchouli, jasmine petals, ambrox, peach musk, vanilla, oak moss, and praline. The result is an oriental vanilla with a touch of light floral sea, inspired, of course, by Greenwich Village, the neighborhood in New York. It launched in 2019, so it's still relatively new. I would say that's very new for the fragrance world. Since there are fragrances that have been around for decades that are still incredibly popular, I just can't believe it took me so long to finally try this fragrance for myself. But Bond is a little bit tougher to find. You're not going to find this everywhere. So let's spray it. I ran out of arms to spray, so I'm just going to do my hand. I think that's safe. I love this fragrance. It is incredible. So special. Mm. I can't believe I haven't heard more buzz surrounding this fragrance. Maybe my head has been in the sand. Have you guys heard a lot about this? I know it's a smaller fragrance house, but wow. This is one of those fragrances that will make you turn your head. You will go after somebody and ask them what they're wearing. I would at least. I love it. I love this fragrance. It's really beautiful at first. It kind of captures you and you think, wow, that's really nice. But as it dries down, it just gets so much better and I find myself just smelling, smelling, smelling. I just want to just spray it all over my body. It's that good. Wow. And it is unlike other fragrances. It's very difficult to describe this fragrance, but I think it's on the same level. I'm about to make a bold fragrance statement here, but I think Greenwich Village is on the same level as a Baccarat Rouge 540. Aventus for her from Creed. You know those standout fragrances that are like, wow, that's amazing. That's different. It falls into the oriental floral category, which is so interesting to me because when I smell this fragrance, I think it is so unique that it doesn't really smell oriental and it doesn't really smell floral. It definitely doesn't smell fruity or woody. It's so different. <laughs> it's like a category unto itself. I'm really trying to decipher what note stands out the most to me and it's very difficult. I cannot thank you enough for recommending this fragrance because I had a list when I walked into the Bon Boutique and I said these are the fragrances that I have to try. It's a power fragrance for sure. This would be an incredible signature scent. You might want to save it for special occasions just because it's so expensive, but if that doesn't bother you, if you don't mind, if you want to wear your best fragrances every single day, this would be a killer every single day fragrance because it's amazing. It smells so elegant. You just smell incredible. As it dries down, it gets this really addictive quality where you just can't get enough. You want to keep smelling it, keep smelling it. You just kind of go back for more. That's what happened to me the first time. I could not stop smelling my hand and I just knew I had to have that fragrance. There's something about it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what note it is that does that. It just makes you want more. There's that same quality you'll find in like Baccarat Rouge 540 that is almost intoxicating. You can't get enough of it. This fragrance has that. I could see celebrities wearing this fragrance. I have no idea if any celebrity wears it, but that's the type of person I just envision when I think about this fragrance. Celebrities, CEOs, powerful women. As much as it pained me at the time to purchase this fragrance and spend so much money, I do not regret a single scent because it is the type of fragrance that just stands out. In my current collection of 
60 to 70 fragrances. This is immediately top five. Immediately. It's that good. It's that special. Now, of course, fragrance is so subjective. This is not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But I would say if you love those really incredible, unique, best fragrance of all time type of fragrances, if you love niche perfumes, especially if you're a Bond fan, if you're a Bond fan, you probably already know about this fragrance and you've made up your mind one way or another. Either you love it or you don't. Check it out if you can. Try to get your hands on a sample, maybe visit a boutique, try to find a local department store that carries this fragrance. It is worth checking out. Blew me away. Blew my mind when the first time I smelled this fragrance. When I first saw this bottle, I thought it was kind of odd. And I thought I wouldn't like the fragrance that much because I just didn't really care for this bottle. I immediately changed my mind. It's so good, I want this to be my signature scent. I'm gonna start wearing this constantly so that people start to equate me with this fragrance and we just go hand in hand. And because it is so incredible, it's one of those game-changing fragrances, it's that level, it almost transcends occasion. You can wear it anytime. When it's your signature scent, when you love a fragrance that much, Nothing else matters. Doesn't matter if it's daytime, evening, special occasion, if you're just running errands. When you identify with the perfume that much, you can wear it anytime and it's perfect. That's how I feel about this fragrance. There are a handful of fragrances in my collection that I feel the same way about. This is one of them. It probably goes without saying, but if I had to choose a favorite fragrance from this haul, it would be Greenwich Village. I purchased that one last. So I purchased Changing Constance first, and then I picked up Rose's Musk. By the time I discovered Greenwich Village, I had already purchased the others. But if I had to choose just one, it would be that one. But they're so different. They are very unique, these three fragrances. They serve different purposes. I think there's a place for each of them in my collection, but they will serve me in different areas. And that completes my niche fragrance haul and unboxing. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you. Please share your recommendations down below in the comment section. I love seeking out your favorites. And I think it's a nice resource for anybody who's coming to the comment section to be able to scroll and just get tons of fragrance recommendations. As always, everything mentioned, everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.